All right, video number two. Uh, before I get into my big boy trader rules, as I like to call them, um, I realized that I didn't go over any of the trades that I was talking to you guys earlier about, earlier about. So um, let me go over one that was really important. So you'll you see I explained the last time uh, where these fractal lines are and that I have the same pair open just three times. Um, so these fractal lines here weren't there. Uh, a while ago they were you know down parallel this way and then this way and it was just a channel for like a month it seemed like I think it was like two or three weeks I'm exaggerating but um, either way this candle here it broke out and disregarded the uh, that thing right there and that thing right there when I was trying to upload the last video it popped up for whatever reason either way when this one jumped out I texted out and this is how important texting out is like every time you get into a trade or before you get into a trade just to make sure everything's good and you know good everything's nice and the rules are met and just you didn't forget anything I opened this trade up and it was a three contract size and when it closed up above here I'm sorry it came up and I put a cell in right here because it touched it but remember the fractal lines I mean they looked a, a little bit like this except a little, lot more narrow um, they were down that channel, and this was the breakout. But while this was happening, it had gone down. The rules were met, except for the moving average was not outside the fractal line. Well, I was working with a friend, and um, and my, my phone dinged. And so I, I got on my remote desktop and looked at it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, everything's good. And I was on just this one. And so the, I couldn't see the fractal lines. I couldn't see them, but I didn't double check. I didn't go through my checklist beforehand. And guess what? That was at a three contract size, and I didn't let that moving average go out. And I texted out and said, hey, I'm in it. And he texted me back, thank God, 30 seconds later and was like, hey, I'm not in it because uh, not all the rules are met. In other words, the, 30, the, the 34 moving average wasn't outside the fractal lines yet. So I immediately got out, and that 30 seconds cost me $1,100. So, like I said, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. This is how important the rules are when you're when you're actually trying to make real money, um, rather than just fooling around if you know if it's a hobby or whatnot. So it's important for beginners to realize that you've got to follow the rules and follow the process. And if you have one mistake, even as little as that, it can cost you a, a really really big significant amount of money if you're trying to make some you know money with with big risk. There's big reward. Uh, well, that time there was just only a big risk. There wasn't a reward in sight. Uh, it wasn't following the process. So that's how important that is. And it sucks, but you can bet a million dollars now that I won't be doing that ever again. Uh, it was a hard lesson to learn, but I'm thankful I know it now. So um, let me go over my uh, trading rules real quick. And I got to find them in my folder. Here they are. Like I said, they're more reminders for me. Um, and uh, the reason why I call them big boy trader rules is I wrote these down after I lost a $900 trade back in June. Uh, I was trading two pairs back then, and um, as you can tell, I only trade the uh, British pound Japanese yen now. And it was on Australian dollar, and you know that one whipsaws a little bit. If you don't know how to manage risk, then you don't really have any business trading anything other than what Al says. Um, listen to the trading plan and you'll be successful. That's really the easiest way you can do it and follow the rules and you'll be a successful trader. Um, I will lead you the right way. So I didn't follow the rules and I got so mad at myself because that was at a 0.4 um, contract size and that was the biggest one I had. And I had two trades open and one of them lost 900 and the other one I think lost uh, 700. And I was super, super mad. And I was about to just throw it in the towel and be, you know, like oh, I'm going back to a regular full time job. And I'm like, you know what? It's it's not it's not the process. It was me. Um, and that's when um, I read Trading in the Zone. So I just I, I was I was enough. I had enough. So I wrote down these rules. So if your risk on the 34, if you're doing the 34 method, if you're trading that way. Um, if the risk is either personally unacceptable or well over 80 pips, in other words, if you look at my screen here, right now, this here to your moving average is 40, or 140 pips. So to me, that's not a trade I want. I'm going to wait for the best trade. Um, so I would wait for it, and this is the next part of the rule. If, it, if the risk is too high, wait for the one hour candle to close above, then back below on a, on a sell, or below, then back above on a buy. So this one... I'm waiting on this to come all the way back down, and that's 120 pips. So that means if I take the trade here, 
the the momentum, the way the trend on the one hour is going to go this way, it's going this way, and to bet against the trend is a dumb thing to do, um, unless you're super good at counter trend trading, which usually those are the people who lose the most amount of money. Uh, but if you're going to bet on it, if it just you know comes down and, and what I call kisses it, you don't really know if it's going to keep going down or not, and you don't really know anything. It's the market it can do whatever it wants, but you've got a much higher likelihood if it's going to close here and then close back above. You can take that entry point, you lose what ten pips, oh so what, and then it's you know it's more likely to go back up. The probability is that it's going to go back up. Um, and that wording is very important, as Al has said and taught. So uh, number two, I never get into two trades um, ever, um, mainly because that there's only one pair on my screen. So I don't open uh, British pound Australian dollar anymore. I don't even open. I don't even look at it um, because then you can think, oh, well, if one had a breakout before, you're thinking, oh, well, the other one's going to have that. Uh, correlation doesn't mean that it's going to work, um, or as Al says, correlation works until it doesn't, which is the best. So either way, um, I don't open two trades at once. Uh, every once in a while or whatever, if if there's a huge breakout and I talk to a couple people in the group or whatever, if my Japanese yen trade is at break even, I'll look at the other one um, because I don't want to. Uh, what how risks how um, how Al told me to do it is. Um, he said these words. He said, ask yourself if these both get stopped out right now, which is the likelihood, how would it impact my account, number one, and how would it affect me emotionally? In other words, how would it affect my next trade? Because you've got to be able to, you know, pull the trigger when you need to. And if I just lost, like I did the other time, you know, 1600 bucks on two trades, it's going to affect the next time I pull the trigger. And that next time might be the win. So that's very important. So um, let's see. Number three, the market doesn't work for me or against me. Okay, that's a trading in the zone mentality. It simply gives me pips or I give it my hard-earned pips. So in other words, like this, this trade earlier, I gave the market my pips for that month. And it sucked. Or actually, that was, you know, the... The uh, $1,100 was my profit for the month up until that point. Um, so I just pretty much broke even on a stupid trade. That's why it's so important. Uh, let's see here. So number four, this is what Jason Sullivan always says. He says, patience pays. You know, it's, uh, it's pretty good along with his Take Profit Tuesdays. Um, but patience pays. If you're, if, if you're not okay with the trade, then wait. Wait for that perfect trade. Uh, number five, I hoped a lot. Okay, now that's a little weird and might be a little bit abstract, but either way, I hoped the trade was going to work. Hoping only leads to disappointment. And I'll correct me one time in the group. I said, I hope it goes this way. And he said, man, there's no, it's, it's, it's either this or not. It's either you follow the process or not. You know, you could be offended at what somebody says, but he's, he's looking out for your success. So just keep that in mind if he, if he corrects you. And he's also got a group to run to, just let you know. And he doesn't want everyone else to get in that mentality either. So he's steering the, the group the right way, which is good. Um, I've, I've said to myself, I'm only going to have one pair on my screen. Um, Al says that a lot for beginners too. Now, this is my biggest, biggest, um, I guess, downfall with trading is FOMO, the fear of missing out. Whenever I see an uptrend like this one, right, we didn't get a real entry. It was uh, way back here. Uh, let's see here. It never came down. So here's your four hour close and it came down. I mean, it got within, you know, 37 pips, but we didn't get an entry until all the way up here. And guess what? I took that entry and then I lost it, <laughs> which is oh, I was so mad. But see, that's the thing is you're not supposed to get mad at the process, uh, you know, and eventually right after that initial feeling of just like, man, I missed that whole trend and get, didn't get any pips. And then I made, you know, I made a, a, a trade and then I lost it. That can be aggravating, especially for a beginner. Um, it's annoying. Well, the whole point is, is right about three minutes after I lost it, I said, you know what? So what? Um, you know, that's part of the process. That's all you, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to lose some and you're, you're supposed to make the big wins whenever you, whenever they come along. Um, so I used to, I used to care a lot about getting into the trade, say, you know, here, 
at the top of this one because I knew the momentum was going that way. You don't know anything, right? So I'd be afraid that I'm going to miss out on this big trend and I wouldn't wait for an entry point. And guess what? The market would tank, <laughs> you know, or on a sell position, it would go up like crazy. Um, and I ended up losing that trade. Well, I just got tired of it. And I said, I'm, you know what? Uh, if the rules didn't apply, um, then I'm not missing out on anything. So I told myself to stop caring about missing a big push. If the rules didn't apply, then I'm not missing a thing. So uh, anything else is jumping the gun and being irresponsible with your trade. Um, and uh, I told myself at that point too, I'm not going to trade Australian dollar. <laughs> Actually write on my rules, don't trade this. Stop, don't do it ever again. Um, and every time I want to open that trade or that pair again, I look at it too. So um, let's see here. Um, obviously move to break even at 50 pips. Your stop loss needs to be 80 pips and your take profit needs to be two to one or three to one, or sometimes even four to one, depending on different resistance levels and all that kind of stuff. And what Al says in the, in the, um, in the, in the uh, plan every week. So, uh, I had to get it through my head that break evens whenever it comes back and your, and your trades up 90 pips and it comes back down to, you know, to your break even, those are successful trades. Um, you know what? And even losses are successful trades and it's freeing, but only if you follow the process. Um, so that's one of my, uh, one of my rules and reminders too. Um, let's see here. Uh, don't have a weekend trade open. So that's really important too, because your entire account is at risk. And I'll tell you how I learned this. It sucks. I had an account open or a trade open and uh, I had my stop loss and I held over the weekend. I was up a hundred pips and, uh, and uh, I moved my stop loss down, you know, to whatever it was or something, but the trade over the weekend opened. This is when the, uh, uh, the uh, North Korea did their bomb test or whatever uh, uh, by Japan. Well, guess what happened? The market opened higher or lower or whatever. And wherever the market opened, if it's below or above your stop loss, like for instance, on a buy, if it's below your stop loss, that's how much money you lose wherever the market opened. I didn't know that. So that trade lost me $700 and I didn't even, I mean, I was all, I, I mean, I just held it open over the weekend. Um, you know, and guess what? Within 10 minutes, it filled the gap. You know, it doesn't always fill, but it filled the gap. And if I had just closed out my position, taken my profit, I could have reopened the position at my break even point. Oh, wow. That sucks, doesn't it? Uh, but I learned that pretty hard. Um, anyway, don't do it. Uh, it's, it's not good practice. Um, and then, uh, just in my advice, this is the most important with my boredom factor. The activity doesn't mean productivity. I'll say it again. Activity doesn't mean productivity. Okay. Just because you're trading doesn't mean you're going to be productive. All right. Following the process means you're going to be productive. All right. Um, so those are my big boy trader rules. I don't think I told you why I named them that. Um, I think I told you that I lost that trade or whatever, but it reminds me of every time you, you know, you hear, oh, you're a big boy, right? Um, you know, or whatever. Uh, you know, when kids say that, you know, my, my big boy pants on or whatever. It's, it's the time where you go from, okay, this is a hobby or something that I kind of care about, or this is how I pay my bills. It's time to grow up. Uh, and try to, you know, make your money and be successful and become a millionaire doing this. Um, so that's why I named them that. And every time I see it, I laugh a little bit and it makes me realize that, you know what, this is just a simple thing. It's very simple if you just follow the process. And the best thing you can do is just listen to Al's recap or not as well as recaps too, because those are important. Um, and then also the trading plans for the week. You know, um, one big thing here too is closing your trade. Like for instance, if you took this buy opportunity here, if it gave us an entry right here and then closing it out here. Okay. I took the trade today, uh, you know, the entry point here and had to close it out here. And then I'm waiting on an entry point to get back here. Um, you know, I had to close it out and, and lose however many pips it was. I think it was 60 or whatever. I haven't written it down yet, but either way, Losing trades aren't that big of a deal. So uh, if you have any questions, like I said, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Um, you guys have a great rest of the weekend. Hopefully get an entry point today. That way we can start making some, some money this week. So uh, I hope I haven't been too long-winded. If so, tell me in, uh, in the group, and uh, I'll just quiet it down. But anyway, uh, I guess I'll see you guys in Miami. Y'all have a good weekend.